Hi, I'm Mark Ryan, City Manager for the City of Titusville. Joining me today is Roz Foster, the President of the North Brevard Heritage Foundation, here at the historic Pritchard House in downtown Titusville. We're here to talk about the Pritchard House and its impact in the community. Roz, thank you for joining me. It's a pleasure to be here. Why is it important that we have uh, the Pritchard House and preserve the Pritchard House for the community? Uh, Captain Pritchard and his family uh, were just very civic-minded and uh, were uh, very instrumental in the development of the early days of Titusville. And it's a wonderful structure, a wonderful example of Queen Anne's style, and has a lot of history here. I bet it does. Can you tell me a little bit more about the history of the Pritchard House? Yes, uh, Captain Pritchard uh, came here actually to the coast in uh, 1876, and he came to Titusville, uh, built this house in 1891, uh, and um, uh, he started uh, also the first electric plant here, the generating plant. Uh, he had Pritchard Hardware Store downtown. Uh, he did a lot of wonderful things for the community, uh, built a lot of uh, structures downtown, uh, such as the bandstand, uh, planted the trees, which we still have some of the palm trees along the avenue. He had a campaign to do that. Also with Doc Wilson, uh, he uh, helped establish the waterworks system here in Titusville. So uh, he really took it upon himself to, uh, to see that Titusville was uh, a growing community and had a lot of interest in it. Another reason why we thought it was important to preserve the Pritchard House uh, was that this house was continuously lived in by members of the Pritchard family uh, up until the time that the county bought it in 2000. So not only did Captain Pritchard and his immediate family have a wonderful history of uh, uh, civic uh, duty that he performed to the city of Titusville, but also the extended uh, family members. So uh, it's a wonderful structure. It's right here in the heart of downtown. And we're looking forward to people coming to the uh, Pritchard House uh, and learning about the rich history of Titusville, but also a focus on the Pritchard family. Well, I had an opportunity to tour the facility before the renovation began, and it's quite a uh, renaissance of the facility since the renovation began. Can you kind of tell, share with us what's, what has occurred and how long it took? Oh my, uh, I started uh, trying to have the, sit, uh, the county acquire this uh, wonderful structure in 2003. And there was a lot of prep work and documentation that had to be run prior to, uh, to the county purchasing it. Uh, then uh, we had to uh, determine structurally what had to be done, uh, engineering wise and uh, architectural and uh, we had to plan that all out, which was quite an extensive, and do the assessment of what we wanted to preserve and what had to be brought up to code. Uh, so the first thing, obviously, a lot of people had asked me, did you move it here because they saw it uh, jacked up on steel, and no, we were stabilizing it. The, the structure had, uh, the weight had shifted, and uh, we had to stabilize it. After we stabilized it, then we began construction on the porch, uh, reconstructing the porch, engineering it uh, for uh, weight load and also for um, uh, hurricane force winds, uh, because back then they didn't do it, although it's been standing for many years. Uh, we had to do all of that. And then uh, after the porch was constructed, um, uh, and uh, we made that uh, load-bearing, uh, et cetera, uh, then uh, we started painting the outside I had to determine the historic colors, which was done by uh, paint scrapes uh, uh, all over the house, which revealed this lovely colors. Also, uh, oral history from uh, Mary Pritchard Schuster, who lives, continuously lived in the house and was the granddaughter of Captain Pritchard. And also, um, by uh, historic photographs, which were black and white, but that determined where it was, where the colors were, the dark and the light. And then I had Mary actually color um, a uh, drawing of the, of the house uh, to show me what she had remembered. You know, all of us from time to time when we do a renovation project, we'll find some, some unique things in the home that we're doing. 
I bet you found some pretty neat things here in this home. Oh, yes, we certainly did. And uh, one of them was an 1891 newspaper that was used to shim in back of one of the fireplace mantles. Uh, we found the uh, original faucets in the sink upstairs in the bathroom were patented in 1907, which we reused those. And when we took the masonite board off of the bathroom to refurbish it, uh, we found original wallpaper in back of that. That's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, the inside, uh, of course, all of the utilities had to be redone, which included the electrical and the plumbing. All the walls had to be replastered. Insulation had to be put in because, after all, um, uh, during the days that this was built in 1891, uh, we didn't have air conditioning. Although this house was uh, wired for electricity because Captain Pritchard and his generating plant. Now, when we say it was wired for electricity, we don't mean that it was wired to have uh, a lot of electric lights, a lot of uh, appliances because they didn't have it. And the generating plant only opened, uh, excuse me, operated uh, in the evenings, oh, until about sundown, uh, until about uh, 9 or 10 o'clock, or when Captain Pritchard decided to go to bed, and then you brought your oil lamps out again. So uh, we also had to install air conditioning heating system because it never had air conditioning heating on all these years. And uh, we have four fireplaces, which was the main uh, source of heat. And then later on, they used uh, uh, kerosene stoves or oil, or oil stoves in front of the fireplaces. So um, after we did all of that, insulation had to be uh, put in. And then all of the windows had to be recorded, which our volunteers uh, graciously did. Uh, a lot of painting had to be done. Uh, we restored the kitchen uh, as a catering kitchen because we want to have it open uh, uh, for dinners and that type of thing. Well, it sounds like it's quite a partnership between the county and, and your organization and the volunteers in the community to make this all come to reality. And, it, and it's very apparent from what I see today that the, the, the effort and the renovations are gorgeous. Well, thank you very much. It was quite an effort, and we really enjoyed doing it, and I think the public will have a, uh, a wonderful place to come to. Well, speaking of the public, when do you anticipate having an opening or being available for the public to use the facility? Uh, we're going to have um, uh, probably a soft opening uh, uh, around Christmas time. Uh, we're going to have a special private party for the Christmas parade, by the way, uh, where we'll have viewing uh, on the porches, and uh, that is already sold out, and well, that was a fundraiser. Uh, but our grand opening for the public come to see it will probably be around Christmas time. And then after that, we'll have it open for rentals for such things as weddings, anniversaries, birthday parties. Uh, but also it's going to be um, a cultural center, a learning center. We want to have, uh, for instance, uh, if you can imagine uh, when we finish our pavilion out back, and right now we have a bricked floor, so we can use that as a stage, but that'll be a place where we can have concerts under the stars in the evening. And we also can have a lot of entertainment. We plan on having plays out there. Um, and our plays, uh, we're going to try to have um, about history. Uh, first person, uh, maybe little vignettes about people who settled in Titusville because we have a lot of documentation on that. But we want to have weddings, uh, we'll have uh, uh, cultural uh, things such as art shows. Um, we have on the north side a, uh, a pergola that will be used as a, a literary reading area. Uh, we have a literary club that would like to come and do study uh, for literature. And by the way, we'll have also a vintage library uh, that people will be welcome to come. And we have many books from the 1800s, early 1900s of not only literature, but also poetry. So uh, a very quiet place. Uh, we'll be on the north side for that under the pergora. And also uh, a smaller wedding can take place there or uh, presentations, lectures, that type of thing. Uh, the other thing that uh, we're going to have are beautiful grounds. Uh, we're going to have uh, family history gardens. And they're sponsored by uh, some of the descendants um, in uh, memoriam of the founding uh, families of Titusville. 
and uh, what we're going to do we have something uh, that will be blooming most of the time so we can use uh, fresh flowers in the house we'll have fruit trees something that's easy to maintain but also uh, a plaque of the family history of these people that are going to support it uh, will be in each garden so therefore when you walk around the gardens you'll be able to capture the history of the families that said it early Titusville that's wonderful. I mean, this this is just another example of the rebirth of the downtown of our community. You know, you've got the US-1 streetscaping project happening right outside the doors here. You've got the Max Brewer Causeway Bridge. They'll be open to the public uh, probably in January. You've got the new Titusville Veterans Memorial Pier. You've got the uh, reconstruction of Marina Park. It's just so much happening. It's, it's a rebirth of the downtown of Titusville. Yes, it is. And we are so happy to be a part of this. You don't know. It's going to be amazing. And uh, we would like to uh, act as a hospitality center for that. And also, the people are talking about what's happening in Titusville now. They're excited about the rebirth of downtown and all the beauty that's going to be down here. And they're excited about coming downtown um, and uh, seeing the rebirth of all the new facilities. So I think it's a, just an exciting time for Titusville, and we're so happy that we'll be able to be an intricate part of this. Is there a phone number that the citizens could call for more information? Yes, they can call me, Roz Foster, at 267-4480. I'd be more than happy to uh, answer any of their questions and also uh, if they'd like to uh, join our organization. Uh, we need lots of volunteers to help us run the Pritchard House. Well, Ross, thank you for spending time with me this morning and sharing about this beautiful reno renovation project. It's our pleasure. And again, I hope you enjoyed this informational video about the uh, renovation of Pritchard House, and we hope that you'll be able to enjoy this facility for decades to come. <laughs>